This is the Asus Chromebook Plus CX34 and just from it having the Chromebook Plus title you know it's going to be high spec in terms of its processor, RAM, storage, screen and the webcam but it's not all perfect and in this video I'll cover the good and bad of each area of this Chromebook as well as the spec options to watch out for if you're looking to buy. If you follow me on X, you may have seen my post last week. I paid just £160 for this, that's about $200, US, and that was for it as a grade B refurb from Student Computers on eBay in the UK. I've been using it for the last week, so I'm ready to give you my thoughts. As usual, not too much to say with the unboxing, and this one as a grade B refurb didn't come with the original box, but the Chromebook and charger were well packaged, and it was a nice reminder that I do like the more unique design of the Asus Powerbrick. To cover off those all important specs making this one a Chromebook Plus, it has a 12th gen Intel Core i3 processor, 8GB of DDR5 RAM, 256GB of universal flash storage, a full HD non-touch IPS screen with a matte finish, and a full HD webcam. I'll cover the other spec options available later on in this video, but all CX34s will be running 64-bit Chrome OS, and see Chrome OS updates through to the AUE date of June 2032. Getting hands on, it's a full plastic build and the first thing I noticed was the smooth top, reminding me of the Asus CX-15 I reviewed. I'm not that keen on it, I prefer a bit of texture but it's personal preference. Weight wise it's reasonable, coming in at 1.47kg, that's about £3.25, so ever so slightly lighter than the Lenovo Slim 3i Chromebook Plus that I showed on the channel last week, but not by much. Asus call this colour black, but to me the outside lid and the inside of the keyboard deck, including the trackpad, are definitely grey. However, I will agree that the bottom of the Chromebook and the keys on the keyboard deck on this model are black. In the US and potentially other regions, there's also a pearl white colour available. There's a slight speckle to both the black and grey plastic on this Chromebook, perhaps easiest to show on camera on the trackpad in the area inside the keyboard deck here. Looking around the sides at the connectivity, there's a lot going on on the right hand side. There's a headset audio jack, two full size USB A 3.2 Gen 1 ports, an HDMI 1.4 port, and a USB C 3.2 Gen 1 port for power, data, and display out. Then over on the left hand side, it's looking a bit lonely with just a single USB C port and an LED for the power. Having the second USB-C port does make it nice to be able to charge from either side of your desk and using it with my pluggable dock everything worked as expected with the ability to output to my two full HD monitors as extended displays whilst using the Chromebook's display as a third screen. One pretty minor thing I've noticed also is that the LED power indicator light is particularly weak. Maybe harder to show on camera here and it might just be as it's a little bit set back. I know some people have complained in the past about standby lights flashing too brightly on their Chromebooks, probably not on this one. With no card reader, an adapter or a hub like the one I showed on the channel from Tobin One might be a solution. I'll link to my video on this one in the description here. As expected, I had no issue connecting my PlayStation 4's controller. The Asus is Bluetooth 5.3 as well as Wi-Fi 6 compatible. On the bottom of the Chromebook, the texture is more interesting, especially with the vents for the fan. I've got the 12th gen Core i3 processor in this one, and if you're looking for a Chromebook to use on your lap, this might not be the one. Whilst it's extremely quick, I found the heat was pretty noticeable, even when the fan hadn't kicked in. The fan itself isn't too loud, but you'll certainly notice it when you're pushing the Chromebook's performance. There are a few light scratches and marks on the bottom of my Chromebook here, but that's just part of it being a grade B refurb. It had 11 battery cycles, so has definitely seen some life. As well as the four rubber feet, the speakers are also positioned on the bottom corners on the sides. The sound quality is okay, not much depth to it, and with the speakers positioned where they are, it's never going to be at its best. They're nice and loud though. To try and give a quick idea, here's a sample from the intro track that I used on this video. Opening up the Chromebook, the screen can go back 180 degrees and you're presented with a pretty nice keyboard deck. It's just a shame those speakers weren't up here. As mentioned, it's an all-plastic build and there is a bit of a flex to the bottom half of it in particular if you give it a light twist, but overall not too bad considering the price point. By the way, if this video is proving useful, please do give it a like to help the channel out.
The keyboard is backlit with good spacing of the keys and a fairly nice travel to them with the feel of some resistance. I've seen some buyers reviews online mention the pearl white colour with the backlit keyboard isn't going to be a great combination because in the daytime it's just going to make the keys awkward to see. I can show you what I mean here with my video from the Asus Chromebook Flip C433 which had silver keys with white text so had that same issue. The touchpad is plastic and whilst basic it's really well sized at 5.7 inches with a very smooth finish to it. It responds fairly well to clicks and I've been fairly accurate with taps and gestures too. Moving on to the screen, the 14 inch IPS display is full HD, large and matte in finish. It gets nice and bright, Asus claim 250 nits. I actually thought the estimate was going to be closer to 300 as it seems brighter to me. The display on mine is non-touch as I've mentioned, but in the US there is also a touchscreen option, so definitely check your region for the options there. The plastic bezels aren't too extreme, but of course are noticeable, and in the top one you'll find the Full HD webcam. It's got a nice manual privacy slider that has a simple control that slides without much resistance to others I've seen, and although it's got the benefit of the Chromebook Plus camera and video settings, I did notice low light backgrounds in particular look noticeably darker to me, but the main subject would still be well lit, especially with the improved lighting option. However, just today I received a critical firmware update for it, so it's good to see there will hopefully be further improvements. Now performance. This thing is fast. I appreciate everything is relative, but even compared to the Lenovo Slim 3i that's on the right hand side in this clip, this Asus will just have the edge over it. That's largely going to be down to the 12th gen Core i3 processor in the Asus versus the newer Core i3 N305 in the Lenovo. And whilst the 12th gen Core i3 is just giving the Asus the advantage, it's definitely generating more heat as I've mentioned and it's draining the 50 watt hour battery more quickly. Asus claim up to 10 hours of battery life, but from my testing so far, I think that's only going to be possible with light use. As I mentioned earlier, there are a number of variations of the spec available for some of the key components in this Chromebook. Just looking at the UK and US markets for now, here's some examples. So in the UK, there are also some models with 128 gig of storage compared to the 256 gig that I have. And in the US, there's quite a lot more variety. There are 12th gen Core i5 and i7 processor options available, as well as this Core i3. Plus the variation in storage, there's 128 gig of UFS but also a 512 gig NVMe drive option and a 16 gig of RAM configuration. And I imagine that the absolute highest end performance will be outstanding, but I'd also consider a higher end Chromebook overall at that price point to have that increase in build quality as well. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments, what you're comparing it against, and do check out this next video from the channel.